One of the most daunting yet surprisingly easy thing to master as a JavaScript developer is JSON. At its core, JSON is simply a string-based data transfer format. It only supports a limited set of values, for example here we have an object. The object itself has a few other values over here, for example we have a string and then we have a number. All keys of an object must be coded using double quotes, the key and value is separated by a colon and the different keys are separated by commas. It looks very similar to a JavaScript object and in fact if we write the same syntax as JavaScript it is going to be perfectly valid, so no surprise, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. A key tenant is that unlike some binary format, JSON is very human readable, at least for someone who knows JavaScript. The first JSON parser was written in JavaScript and if you are using some other programming language, you might still need to install an external library, but for JavaScript you don't need to install anything extra as the runtime has first class support for JSON serialization and deserialization as a part of the built-in JSON module. So here we have some JSON content stored in a very simple string and we can pass this string into a real JavaScript object by using the json.parse method. This method takes that string and converts it into its JavaScript equivalent. So what we get back for this particular input is a real object. We can access its name property, its age property. We can verify that the types are correct as well. The type of object would be object, the type of object.name would be string, and the type of object.age would be number. The process of converting an input JSON string into its JavaScript equivalent is called deserialization, which we are doing using the json.parse method. We can also do the opposite of taking a JavaScript object and converting it to its JSON equivalent, also called serialization, using the json.stringify method. Of course, this gives back a string which we can verify using the type of operator. Now if we log this string out, you'll notice that it is quite compressed. This is because JSON, like JavaScript, is not white space sensitive. So just like it doesn't matter if we write our object in JavaScript on a single line or on multiple lines, it doesn't matter in JSON either. Because it is a string friendly format designed for simple data transfer, JSON doesn't support the full set of JavaScript data types. In addition to the simple values that we've looked at, which is string, for example John Doe, number, for example 30, JSON also supports booleans, which are true and false, the null value, arrays, and of course the arrays can contain any other data type that JSON supports. For example, here we have an array that consists of two objects, which in turn again contain strings and numbers. And then finally, you can have other objects as well. And of course, once this gets parsed, we get the same equivalent of writing this code in JavaScript. JSON is a strict subset of JavaScript, so all valid JSON is a valid JavaScript expression, but on the other hand, all valid JavaScript is not valid JSON. Beyond the type restrictions that we've looked at, there are a few other syntax restrictions that also only apply to JSON. The first restriction has to do with trailing commas, so while you can have trailing commas in arrays in JavaScript, they are not valid in JSON. Since it is invalid, the built-in json.parse function will throw an error. Similarly, we can have trailing commas at the end of object properties. That is also not valid in JSON. The other big restriction is that you must use double quotes everywhere. So single quoted strings are not supported. That will throw an error. And similarly, the keys also need to be double quoted. While it is valid to use single quotes for keys within JavaScript, that is not going to work within JSON. If we follow these two simple rules that no trailing commas and always use double quotes, then we will be fine. A little known fact is that all of the supported values in JSON are actually valid JSON even by themselves. Now of course we can use json.parse to parse an object, but we can actually use it to parse a string as well, we can use it to parse a number, we can use it to parse a boolean, to parse the null value, and of course we can use it to parse arrays as well. Now even though these are all examples of valid JSON, most commonly you will be using an object at the root of your JSON content. There are some values that can appear in JavaScript objects that get handled differently by JSON than you might expect. As we've mentioned, JSON supports the JavaScript number data type and it supports everything that is type of number except for the special values nan and infinity. Whenever JSON stringify finds these values in our objects, it actually replaces them with a null value. The reason here is that these values might not be supported in other programming languages, so converting them to null makes for a better cross-language experience. In addition to these special values, there is one more special value that you should watch out for and that value is undefined. 
Since age is pointing to undefined, if we try to read %age right now, the JavaScript runtime gives us undefined, but that is also the value that the JavaScript runtime gives us for any property that doesn't exist on the person object. And based on this fact, JSON stringifier treats an undefined pretty much as an absent property. So name still gets serialized, but the age property which is pointing to undefined gets completely removed from the output. Now if you do want to serialize the fact that a property exists, but its value is absent, then of course the answer is use an explicit null. And now json.stringify will preserve that property with the value pointing to null. The json stringify method actually takes a few additional optional arguments that can be used to customize the generated json string. Consider the simple JavaScript object consisting of foundation pointing to string Mozilla and a pointing to the number 1998. We can customize how this object will get serialized by creating our own custom replacer function. For each property that JSON has to serialize, it will invoke this function with the key and the value. We can do lots of cool stuff in this function. For example, we can remove all of the properties where the value is of type string by returning undefined because as we know, undefined values result in property omission with JSON stringify. We can return some other value as well. For example, for the key year, we can sort of mask it by returning the string star 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 star. And for everything else, we can leave it unchanged by returning the value as is. To use this replacer function, we pass it as a second optional argument to json.stringify. And of course, for our Mozilla example, foundation is removed because it is of type string and ear is masked. In addition to the second optional argument, stringify actually takes a third optional argument as well, which is used to determine the indent. As we know, if we have an object and we try to JSON stringify it, we get back a pretty compressed string. Using the third argument, we can pass in a number to nicely format the generated string, for example, Havia formatting it with two spaces. You can also customize how your JavaScript classes get serialized by adding a custom to JSON method. For example, Havia have a simple class person that takes a config object and then notes it down as its config property. We can customize how this class instances get serialized by providing a toJSON method and whatever we return from this method is what will actually get serialized by json.stringify. Here we are saying that when the person gets serialized, it should contain everything that gets passed as the config and in addition, the type property with the value person string. To demonstrate that, let's just create a new person with the name John and the age 25 and now if we try to json.stringify the person, our two JSON will get called and the resulting output will contain type person in addition to the config that we passed in, which is name John age 25. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.